Okay, so uh, this talk is going to be about some of the notations associated with groups. Okay, uh, and and actually some of the notations that there, there are some theorems or results one would need to prove to say these notations are clear, and we're not doing that right now. We'll be seeing those in due course. But I'll I'll just explain what's happening and see that later. The first is that when you have products involving the groups, you can draw parentheses from the products. So if you have this type of product, you can write it just as A, B, D, C. So you can draw both the parentheses and the and the star, the group operation symbol. Okay. So just like you know when you're multiplying numbers in algebra, one of the first things you learn in algebra is that like symbols is that the product a times b is just written a b right mm -hmm. the same is true for group multiplications thus the product uh, of two elements in a group is just written written as by writing the elements next to each other by concatenation okay so we can drop the parentheses and the multiplication symbol now in order to show that this this notation makes sense you would have to show that the sort of the parentheses don't matter where you put the parentheses doesn't matter right and that actually follows from what what of which of the group axioms tells you that the way you parenthesize doesn't matter? Associative. Associativity. So there's actually something called generalized associativity, which tells you that even for products of length more than three, that's true. We'll talk about that in the associativity video. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, is that inverses, you can, I mean, the same thing. For inverses, you, you basically just put an inverse superscript and you just parenthesize whatever you are inverting. So for instance, this one, A star, C star, G inverse, you just write as A times C, G inverse. Okay, uh, the identity element is denoted one or E. Uh, or it, especially if in, before beginners, we often denote it as E, like when you are just starting out in group theory, just so you don't confuse it with the number one, the real number one. But uh, as, but in like, as you get more and more uh, sort of used to group, people often slip and denote it as one unless there's an actual numerical one going on somewhere okay uh, by the way if you're if you have products you will you will usually not see e, the identity written as one of the things in a product why why will you usually not see people write e times b because e times b is equal to b, b. so so you usually won't see the identity element written in a product as one of the pieces in the product because if it's there in the product you can just sort of remove it okay but if you have to write it in isolation, you use it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, repeated multiplication is denoted by powers. So x star x, you could write as xx, but you could also write it in short as x square. Okay. And actually powers uh, follow very similar laws to those you have seen for exponents with numbers, uh, which is again going to be a topic for later. Okay. Uh, so right now we just did constant on the notation. Okay, what is the note what is the shorthand for x star x star x, which is just x x x? What would the shorthand for that be? X cubed. X cubed. Okay. You could also do negative power. So what is the sh what will the shorthand for x inverse star x inverse be? X to the minus two. X to the minus two. Okay. Uh the, another thing you remember is that inverse and power superscripts, these things in superscript just mean the things you write on top, they bind only to the immediately preceding symbol. So if I write x, y inverse, what does it mean x star y inverse or does it mean x star y whole inverse? The first this one. Not this one. Okay. If I wanted to write this in short, I would have to write this one as x, y and parenthesize it and then put inverse, which you'll see later you can simplify this using the properties of the inverse map as y inverse times x inverse, that you'll see later. Uh, but, but this thing is just x star y inverse. So the inverse just goes on the previous symbol unless there's a parenthesis used. If the parenthesis is used then it's on the previous parenthesis thing. So what is x y square? Is it x star y square or is it x star y whole square? The first one. The first one. So powers also behave like inverses. Okay. Is the lower step also here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, so so this is the this is the step for the group operations. We often use the word word for these kind of expressions. These are strings, right? They're like letters. So a, b, d, c are letters, and these group expressions, which are just written as strings in them, 
we often people will talk of words so words are just like you know you have letters and you put them together okay so these expressions for group elements are words okay though some of the words may also involve inverse symbols okay uh, okay now let's get to some notation for uh, the groups elements of the group subsets of the groups etc so groups and subsets of the groups are typically denoted by what kinds of letters capital letters capital letters okay uh, the typical letters are uh, uh, like G. G is the favorite, most people's favorite because G stands for group. H and K because they're next to G. Uh, and then sometimes Greek letters, gamma, lambda, etc. So there's basically uppercase letters, capital letters. Okay. Subsets of groups are also denoted by capital letters. Okay. Though sometimes subsets you may denote A, B, C, but still capital letters. Okay. Uh, Elements of groups are denoted by what? Hmm? Lowercase letters? Mm -hmm. Like what? G. Little g, little h, maybe a, b. We, we've been using a, b, c, x, y, z, anything you want. Okay, maybe alpha, beta, okay, lowercase. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about in this uh, thing is complete group description. So remember, a group is not just a set. A group is a set with a what? Binary operation. Which is the group multiplication, right? So the group description, in, uh, if you want to describe both the group and the binary operation, you typically write it like this, G comma star. Okay, G comma star means the G stands for the set and the star stands for the group multiplication. Okay. Uh, but some people want to describe not just the binary operation, they also want to specify the identity element and the inverse map. Because in some definitions of, in some versions of the definition of group, the group structure includes not just the binary operation, but also the identity and the inverse map. Okay? So, so for instance, the additive group of integers in this notation you write as z comma plus. Okay. In this notation you write as z comma plus comma zero comma minus. There'll be a, a video soon on examples and you'll see the things written in these notations. Okay. So remember the group is not just the set, but often if the operation is understood, people just write the letter for the set. Uh, finally, there's something I'll mention. I don't want to talk about that in detail, but abelian groups that is uh, groups so abelian means that the group operation is commutative okay x times y is y times x for all x and y in the group and if you have an abelian group then then the typical notation used for abelian groups is additive notation okay that means the group operation is denoted by plus and the group sort of the notation is sort of uh, inspired by the way you add numbers the notation is very similar to that. And you'll see that in the video on, on abelian group. Now, even if you have an abelian group, you can use this multiplicative notation, especially if it's living inside some non-abelian group. But uh, the typically, people prefer to use additive notation when studying abelian groups. Okay. Uh, 